Right. Uh, question 15 is generally considered the hardest question in the paper. Um, in, in this particular example, it's difficult because it's juggling around lots of concepts. Um, sometimes you'll find that question 15 will just have a straight six marks or maybe a one mark, then a five marks. This is broken down into lots of stages because it's juggling around lots of different ideas. Um, it's not a very elegant question. Um, so Maria owns a cheese factory, of course she does. The amount of cheese in kilograms that Maria sells in one week, Q, is given by this expression. So P is the price of the cheese um, and Q is the amount she sells. Those of you who are doing your business studies, you might notice that as P increases, 45P will increase because we're subtracting it, the value of Q will go down. This has a negative gradient. So the higher the price, the fewer she'll sell. Um, and those of you who are doing economics might appreciate that this isn't really a very strict economic um, demand and supply curve because it's a straight line, not a curve. But that makes it a little bit easier. Right. Um, write down how many kilograms of cheese Maria sells in one week if the price is eight euros. Well, there's a nice, easy question to start with. Um, the first question is just a straightforward application of that. It tells you that the price is eight Okay, P is the price, just put eight into there. And it says how many kilograms of cheese, and we know that Q is the number of kilograms of cheese. So that's quite straightforward. Maria earns this much for each kilogram of um, cheese sold. Again, if the price of a kilogram is eight euros, how much does she earn? So again, that's just put eight minus 6.80 will tell you um, how much she earns. But then of course, times we need to multiply it by the answer from a we need to bring that answer down because of course that's what she would make for each kilogram and we know she's much we know how many kilograms she sold from the previous part so notice how this question builds up part a you just sub eight into the equation to get an answer it's only one mark it's a write down question i said we write down questions it means there's generally no marks for working there is some working out here, um, but the, the, the mark is just for getting the answer. So there's no expectation other than just putting this into a calculator um, and, getting the, um, and getting the answer out of the other end and writing down the answer. For part B, there are two marks. Um, we're doing the same thing again. We're subbing eight in, but we need to multiply it then by the answer for A. So they're asking you to do a little bit more in the next part. Um, to calculate her weekly profit, W, Maria multiplies the amount of cheese she sells. Well, the amount of cheese she sells was given in the question as 882 minus 45p um, by the amount she earns per kilogram, which is p minus 6.80. Okay, write an expression for W in terms of p. There you go, I've given you the answer there. The reason I've given you it is because I want to talk about part D. Find the price p that will give Maria the highest weekly profit. Well, this is a factorized quadratic. It's two linear expressions multiplied together, which will multiply out to give a quadratic. So W will equal something uh, P squared plus something times P plus some constant. What do quadratics look like? Well, quadratics either look like that or they look like that. Which one is this? Well, it depends on the value of A. It depends on what the value of A is, whether it's positive. This is A is greater than zero, and this is A is less than zero. So what do we have here? Is A going to be greater than zero or less than zero? Well, we're going to get the A value when we multiply these two terms together, negative 45P times P. So this is going to be negative 45P squared. So a is negative 45, which means we're going to have this shape of graph, okay, which means we're going to have a maximum point there. okay, And that is the value we're looking for. And it says find the price P. So it's, it's what value of P? It's what P is effectively the value of X here and W is the value of Y. We want the X value. We want the P value, if you like. This is going to be on a on a graph like that where that's p and that's w we want the p value we want to know this value here 
That's only worth two marks. How do you find the maximum point? Well, you could differentiate and do all those things. Um, you could, or you could just put it into calculator. And at this stage of the exam, I would start putting it into calculator. You also know this is on the line of symmetry, so we can use the minus b over 2a, but that means doing some playing around with arithmetic here. You've got that equation, put it in your calculator, find the maximum. And in fact, you can actually type it in in that form. You don't even need to do the multiplying out as long as you appreciate that it is going to be this shape of quadratic, which is why it's going to have a maximum point. If you type it in in that equation, two advantages to that. One, it saves you the time. You don't have to expand the expression. Two, it's much more accurate. 882 times 6.80, there's lots of potential there for errors. 45 times 6.80, lots of potential to go wrong in these calculations. So if you just enter it in like that into your calculator, it will produce the graph for you. Find the coordinates of that maximum point, and it's the x coordinate, which is the value of p, is the one that you want. Okay, any questions about question 15? Any questions? No? Okay. Good. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Sam. Great. Excellent. Good. Right. Um,